What's going on everybody, Tanner with another video. I hope you're all having a great day. And in this video, we're gonna be breaking down the data that I showed you guys of sort of how to set up a testing campaign in yesterday's video. And today I wanna to show you how to break down those results and know what to take the next steps as. You know, a lot of people ask me, should I cut the campaign? Should I keep it going? You know, Tanner, what should I actually do? So I'm gonna be talking about all the different variables that come into that uh, today, as well as I'm in Miami right now, I'm still here, and if you want to be here with my team and I for three days straight hands-on mentorship, let me know. Go to learnwithtanner.com, join the giveaway, and also if you join, you get the free course anyways. I made an entirely free course on dropshipping just for those who opt into the giveaway. You'll get it by email and uh, you'll be good to go. So let's not waste any more time here. Let's go ahead and get started with this video and I'll see you on my computer. All right, let's get this show on the road. So we've been testing some products. We set up some campaigns. All right, now what do we have to do next? We're gonna break this down into three steps, okay? Step number one is gonna be organizing your data. We talked about this in the last video as far as product research and keeping track of all your products and stuff like that. But if you're not staying organized in business in general, whether it's drop shipping or anything else, then you're gonna fall behind because when you try to juggle a bunch of things and try to remember, oh, I gotta remember, I gotta do this, I gotta do that, you're not gonna be able to remember and eventually you're gonna drop everything and you don't wanna do that. So now I'm gonna be showing you how to organize your data, how I do it, and why I think it's important and why I know it's important. You know, data is king, all right? If you know how to organize your data, then you're gonna have an advantage, significant advantage on your competitors all right so the first thing we have to do organize your columns all right if you don't know what Facebook columns are already um, this is what it is all right I have this list of long things here you're probably like all right what is this so if you go to our Facebook ads manager you're gonna see these things at the top here all right you're gonna see campaign name delivery budget CPM all this stuff all right now this is an old ad account that we were using to test some products and it wasn't as profitable as I wanted to be but you know this is just an example for you guys so these things up here at the top these are your columns all right most people what they're gonna do is see this this is performance this is default columns on your ads manager now some of the stuff on here is pretty important you know stuff we want to look for but it's definitely not everything all right when people when I'm helping some people out and they show me their ad account and I see they don't have customized columns it's like reading a foreign language all right I don't know what's going on and I can't tell so what I want you guys to do right now make your custom columns right what you're gonna have to do is go here and go down to customize columns and I'm not gonna show you how to do it because it's very basic you just type it in and drag it over here and apply it and then save it this is my save columns right here all right we have the campaign name delivery by the way this is gonna be why I think each of these are important and why they are important all right so campaign name basic we'll get into that in a second on more of organization and stuff like that and delivery of course these are inactive because it's old and budget is gonna show using ad set level unless you're using CBO campaigns. Now CPM, all right, CPM is important. Now this is older, so you can see the CPMs are pretty low. You know, now it's harder to even get a CPM that's under like $10 for most people when they're testing a product. Uh, reach, pretty simple. We're seeing how many people were actually reaching with our ads, um, sort of ties in with the CPM. And link clicks, of course, this is basically the funnel, all right? Link clicks, add to carts, website checkouts initiated, purchases, and then the cost of purchase, amount spent, and conversion value. Uh, so if I drag this down a little bit so you can see more, conversion value is actually not something that people have on their ad account. Most people don't have this on their ad accounts anymore, um, but it was definitely helpful to see how much you actually made total. Now, Facebook doesn't track all of it. They're usually off by a decent percentage, um, but the ROAS will be able to track even. But all this stuff, the reason why the link clicks and added carts and all this stuff is important is because you can make custom audiences off of this as well as we use them as key indicators to determine whether something's doing well or not. So we're gonna be going into that even more in a second. Organize your columns, make sure you have all this down so you can see everything and what's going on. We're gonna get into that in a minute when it comes down to looking at each of these and using them as indicators. Um, but the next thing you're gonna need to do is organize your ads at all three levels. So if we go back to our ads manager here, you're gonna see the three levels. We're gonna have campaigns, ad sets, and then the actual ad creative. So you wanna make sure that you're actually organizing this so you can keep track of stuff. This is another thing I see. People leave it as default names, whatever, when they're setting stuff up. So as an example, if we were testing a head massager, that was just the first thing that came to mind. All right, so if we had a campaign, we would name it, all right, head massager, and then we wanna incorporate the margin. So I'll do $32 break even point, again, random, and then page retargeting, just an example. So if we were testing a product, if you watched the last video, you would see that I would just put like cold testing or cold interest or something like that because we're just testing a product with cold interest. You know, we have no data. We can't do page view retargeting if we don't have any link clicks to retarget. Um, and then when it comes down to the ad set level, what I'd like to do as this example I put here, you just wanna put in all the variables of the audience that you're targeting. So right there you see spa, I put the interest in the uh, parentheses and I put the countries, the uh, abbreviations, 
and then the age, and then the ad placements. I don't put the budget because that already shows up because of my uh, customized columns. And also, real quick, I forgot to mention, make sure you save your columns once you set them up. What you have to do is just go back here and then go to columns, whatever it was, and then go down and save it. There'll be a save button and then name it whatever you want because uh, if you don't save it, it's not gonna be there the next time you refresh your ad account. Um, and then as far as the creative level, I like to track your creative uh, because you wanna split test. You wanna try different things. You can use dynamic ads or you can just keep track of your page posts um, like this. So we have the head massager dash, retargeting carousel variation one. That's just a, sort of a complex thing. We may get into carousel retargeting later on in this series because uh, I'm gonna be showing you some of the sort of the twists and turns that have been going on here in 2019 with Facebook. Just name your variation. If you have one ad they use for retargeting, name that you know, retargeting variation one. If you have a normal ad that you're using for everything, just name this uh, head massager variation one because it's basic, it says what it is, and you wanna be able to keep track of which one is performing best and then go from there. Step number two, now that we've organized our data, we have to break down our data and see what's working and what's not and sort of why that occurs and what we can do next to uh, get to the next level, which will be step three. But step two, breaking down our data, all right. Um, you wanna look for consistency. That's something that's hard to have right now with Facebook ads is keeping consistent sales going on. I've talked to a lot of people, like I was just on my Instagram live stream, or not my Instagram, my Facebook live stream for my private group for next generation e-commerce students, and this guy's like, yeah, I've been just getting one to two sales a day, and it just sometimes stuff just falls off. So consistency is hard to maintain with Facebook right now, and if you know how to maintain it, then you will go a lot further than your competition. So the main variables you wanna look for when you're just testing with cold interest is the age, placements, genders, countries, and region. Region is, you know, if you're targeting multiple countries, then you wanna use country, but if not, you're using region. So how do you do this? This is again, sort of one of those basic things, but at the same time, Facebook is sort of just like, you get all the data, you have it, you break it apart, and then you put all the pieces together, and you build that full out puzzle, which may be success and profitability. Uh, so if we go back here to an example, let's say if we go to this campaign here and we see all the ad sets and we wanna break it down to see what was doing best, all we do is go to breakdown and we do it by delivery and whatever we wanna look for. So basically what we're doing is just cutting off the unnecessary ad spend. So right here you can see this specific ad set, the only ones that have sales are the 18 to 24 uh, in ages. So it spent a total of $173.89 and had a 4.14 row ads and it was spending all this unnecessary money for all the ages that were over 24. So what I would do is notif notice that, all right, look, the pattern here is that only younger people are really you know, getting the sales for this specific ad set. So what I would do is duplicate this ad set and then only have it set to be ages 18 to 24 because that's the only ones they were buying. Now, in theory, you would think, all right, you know, I'm cutting off the ends, I'm gonna make so much more money now, it's gonna be much more profitable, but, that's not always the case. Facebook isn't always gonna be in your favor here, but that's definitely a way to minimize your risk. And you wanna do this, I don't wanna show you for all of it because again, one of those very basic things um, that you can sort of do on your own, but you wanna do this for each of these and sort of just look for consistencies. Look at all the interests for your product test and see, you know, is it usually the similar ages, the same placements? You know, is it Facebook feed, Instagram feed, you know, what's working best for me? Um, and now the next step is gonna be sort of just tracking your metrics. Now, of course, you're gonna see everything in your ads manager. That's gonna be easy to see. Um, but if you're not keeping track of your individual campaigns for each product in like a spreadsheet, then you're not gonna be able to work out the kinks as easy as, um, you know, it should be. So analyze everything you're doing, write down. I don't have a spreadsheet example for you guys here on this video, but it's very simple. Just write down the campaign for the product you're testing and figure out you know, which variation of ads is working best and sort of how you can switch around things by noticing the consistencies. You know, Use the same thing with the genders and all the variables breaking down the data and then figure out what's working best, why is this audience working best, and why is this ad variation working best, and then tie those good audiences to the good ads you've created to get the perfect, well, not perfect result, but hopefully a better result. So now let's get into everything you guys have been waiting for, some of my Facebook ad rules that I go by, as well as you know, getting out of the testing phase. So step number three, make the right decision. Okay guys, you wanna make the right decision always. So cut it or leave it? Am I gonna get an ad set and you know scale the product or is it time to cut this product and stop spending money on it? So here are five rules we're gonna talk about real quick before we get into some more of the, the detailed stuff. I wanna go over these five rules that I go by with my Facebook ads. One, for you guys out there, if there's a profitable ad set you have within a campaign, don't turn off the whole campaign, all right? Just turn off the unprofitable ad sets. I know it sounds basic, but a lot of people make this mistake by turning off the entire campaign and ruining the consistency they had with maybe one or two profitable ad sets within that campaign. Now two is gonna be, if you have an ad set that spent half of the break even point, without any ads to cart, turn it off. The reason we have these customized columns is to use them as indicators to see, all right, look, you know, there's some ad to carts here and it's been about half the break even point and 
I'm gonna turn it off or leave it going. So what I used to do is just let everything spin up to the break even point before I would turn it off on each ad set. But then I realized I was spending a lot of unnecessary money because it was going all the way up to the break even point and then it was basically just unprofitable. It got no sales or it got one sale very close to the break even point and it wasn't even worth it at all. So if it goes over half without any ads to cart, just go ahead and turn it off. Now number three is don't ever change any variable on a profitable ad set. That could be anything, any one of the things that we talked about, ages, placements, genders, regions, all that stuff. If you have something that's profitable, don't touch it, okay? Facebook's doing its job and it's doing it well, so you don't wanna mess that optimization up because like I said before, what you wanna do is look at the variables by breaking it down then duplicate it. Don't just change the current ad set and it stayed there because it's gonna to have to re-optimize and you're not gonna, most likely not gonna have the same um, results as you had before. And number four is if you turn off a campaign or an ad set or whatever, don't turn it back on. Just make a new one, all right? Um, again, I was just in my Facebook group live stream for next generation e-commerce students. And this guy's like, yeah, man, I had a product that was doing well. I was getting like five to 10 sales a day. And then um, I, I had to go somewhere, I had to travel, I didn't have any internet, whatever. And I came back and turned it back on and I didn't get any results. What I would say to him, first off, I told him this already, just try if best as you can, just don't turn any, something off if it's profitable and it's having consistency. You know, getting five to 10 sales profitably a day is very, very good. And you don't wanna ruin that momentum. And the second thing I would tell him, or I did tell him is that make, new, make a new campaign exactly what you did before, using the same audiences, the same ads and stuff like that and just start it over instead of turning something back on because turning it back on, Facebook's not gonna be able to catch up to where it last left off. So make a new campaign exactly what you were doing before. And five, I know this sounds basic too, but let Facebook do its job, all right? Nobody knows the Facebook algorithm perfectly. Nobody can master it. You know, I'm always learning. Uh, hopefully you're always learning and I always wanna get to the next level, but let Facebook do its job, all right? I was talking to someone today and they had turned off an ad set, well, several ad sets, only after like a couple of dollars, there was like $2 spent. I was like, how come you turned them off? You know, they may have had some potential. We don't know because it hadn't spent enough money. He's like, you know, they didn't have any added carts or whatever the indicator he was saying uh, was as an example. So let Facebook do its job, spend some money. Don't get scared after Facebook spent a couple of bucks and not made any money. You know, you're gonna have to spend money to make money in any business. There's gonna be risk, whether it's e-commerce, or anything else, there's some kind of risk involved always. So now before we end it, two of the most common questions that I'm gonna get about this video. One, how much should I spend testing each product? So I would tell you, you don't need to spend more than $100 unless it's a very high ticket product with a very high break even point. So use the interest strategy that I showed you in uh, yesterday's video and you won't have to keep testing a ton of different interests. I don't, that's what I used to do. I'd make one campaign, 10 ad sets with random interest, but if you're using proven data to use interests in, off of brands and pages and stuff like that, then you're gonna minimize your risk a lot more than just using random interests. So I'll definitely suggest trying that out and uh, you know you save money and time by putting in the effort beforehand before you actually start running a bunch of stuff and just keep spending a ton of money on one product test. Uh, so the second question and last question we have here for this video is, when do I know if I should scale or turn off a campaign for a testing campaign? So I would tell you, if you have a product test campaign, uh, you know you set it up, everything like that, and after a couple of days, it's getting sales and it's profitable and it has a, overall, the campaign has a profitable return on ad spend, then I would leave it and then go into the campaign, turn off the unprofitable ad sets, and then replace them with new ones. And the same strategy applies vice versa. If you have a campaign that's overall unprofitable, with not a good return, then I would just go ahead and turn it off and move on to the next product. You can't be emotionally attached to products and testing and stuff like that, you know, because eventually you're gonna be spending too much money testing this product just to try and make it work. Um, and I think the best thing to do is just move on, keep testing other products, and you'll be able to get to where you wanna be. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something. In the next video, tomorrow, we're gonna be talking about getting to the next level out of the testing phase, you know, maybe some CBO stuff, you know, really just showing you guys some of the stuff that's not in the basics right now um, that everybody else has been talking about. I wanna share some new stuff with you guys that's been going on that I've been trying, um, some stuff that has worked, that hasn't worked, and uh, getting you to the next level. So I appreciate you guys watching this video. Remember, go to learnwithtanner.com or go to the link in the description if you want to join the giveaway uh, to come to Miami with my team and I, as well as you get the free course even if you just join the giveaway and don't even try to win. But I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.